Stop blaming and start blooming. The moon, the mercury, the universe, they are not obligated to fulfill our wishful thinking. No one is. Blooming is our greatest responsibility. It is a sacred responsibility to lead with right intention, devotion and action. When we lead with absolute passion and courage in heart, all the known and unknown forces will align with each other to manifest our blooming. I am Chandresh Bhardwaj and this is Break the Norms. to start this episode by sharing this uh, very interesting story which happened in one of the private retreats many many years ago so private retreat is only with a particular client it could be the clients you know family or you know their partner but it's just surrounded within that zone of client it's very intense work for a few days and uh, it's a very inspiring experience for me surely but it turns out to be very inspiring and transformational for them so this happened with this particular client and uh, he said i want to uh, you know do this retreat experience with you and uh, as you know i just want to be there by myself with you but my wife will want to also come she would want to come and i said yeah okay that's good right he said yeah that's great but when she mentions it you have to say no and i said why do i say no he said because i want to be there by myself i just want to absorb your teachings and i want to go through the rituals and all the work and then i want just a mental you know space and i said that's you know a good intention you want to dive deeper into the spiritual work i get it but you can tell that to her yourself he said no, no i don't want to say it because any communication i have with her it just starts to make me feel very anxious and i know a major part of my anxiety my pain comes from her and i said okay all right i'll take care of it i'll see what i can do and then he said okay my business partner would also want to come with me and i said you know he's like your brother right he said yeah he's more than a brother but again a major part of my anxiety comes from him so i don't want him to also you know join here so that was the pact he made with me that i would do this so i said you know if i hold them back for you here you got to also agree to one of my terms and one of my term is if i feel they need to be there with you and if i mention it you will have to say yes and we we were working together for a long time but you know and he said yeah of course i trust you if you feel they need to be there i will not question you but for now i just need to be there alone and i just need your presence there so we kick started the retreat and i said you know now that the major source of your anxiety is not here so i assume when they are not here you should be happy and joyful and peaceful he said yes that's the hope that's the plan and i said okay i'll keep watching you we'll start the work from tomorrow morning and i'll keep watching you and if i feel you're not happy if i feel you're not peaceful then i got to take the right action he said yeah sure so i you know we started the work early morning uh, next day and i would always ask him are you happy are you peaceful and uh, he would say yes i'm very peaceful i'm very happy to be here and we were by the way in himalayas in india far far away from us not mentioning the name of city and, and anything for you know to protect the privacy of the client but yeah he was far away from here so after 2 days or so he finally blurted he's like okay all right i'm not happy i'm you know still miserable and i think i'm even more frustrated now why do you think this is happening i'm supposed to fix myself here and that's that was a great opportunity for me to share the, the truth with him and the truth was they are not his source of anxiety he's the source of his anxiety he's the source of his pain and i reminded him that I'm glad you came all the way up here just to escape but the good news is now you know the truth they were not the ones bringing you pain or anxiety 
In fact, your partner and your spouse, they are some of the most compassionate, wonderful humans I know. And I also know you have come a long way in your life. You know, you there was a point in your life when you thought you'll be homeless, you'll have no relationship ever. You had no sense of compassion and love, but look at you now. You are diving deeper into this spiritual work. You are here with me. And he said, it's making so much sense now. So I said, okay, now it's time, you know, for my term, my condition to happen. Can I call them here now? And he said, okay, but uh, call them after three, four days. Uh, I said, okay, it will take them three, four days to come here anyway. So yeah, they all joined. It was a very powerful, you know, 10 days of experience for all of us. It still remains to my heart and mind because I still, you know, talk about it with them. And this became a very interesting and important lesson for me. That was the early years of my practice as well. And the lesson was very simple that we cultivate our own suffering. You know, we plant the seeds of our own anger and anxiety. But the twist in the story is it's us who's planting this. But the mind gives you a very different narrative. The mind will tell you that it's the other who's planting the seeds of suffering, not you. The mind never ever wants to take responsibility. And this is when things start to get very tricky. And I don't know what has been my strength specifically in this journey, but there's been one of the strength and kind of this thing I always had in me, which was to observe life, observe people. Like my grandma always used to tell me that anytime you used to cry, we would take you to the street and you would just watch people coming and going. And that's all you would do and you would not cry. You would so deeply immersed in watching people. And I have so many memories of just watching people. Like I remind my father of his clientele that, you know, he saw 20 years ago, 25 years ago. And he's fascinated by my reading 25 years ago, because if my father told these people that you have such a great potential, do this and do that, then I have observed them for the last 25 years and have watched so many people who followed that spiritual guideline and really became very successful. And I also watched people who lost track and they got into a very different path and they kind of messed up that opportunity to bloom. In fact, I met, uh, so I was in Toronto. My father also was with me and we were standing outside the hotel and someone just showed up and uh, he looked at my father and he said, hello. And my father looked at him and he said, uncle. And, you know, he said his name and he called my father uncle. And that was a person I last saw in India probably more than 25 years ago, my memory of him was sitting behind his scooter and going to the local video store to buy like rent Bollywood movies. And he used to be very creative at that time. And my father used to tell him all the time that you are creative, go into artistic job, you'll do great and all that. And guess what? He has a art gallery in Toronto. So my father forgot about it. And I reminded him. And when I reminded him, uh, that young person who saw us, he was like, of course, you know, he's been telling me since I was a little kid, and that's what I'm doing now. So it's very fascinating how a spiritual reading, a genuine, right spiritual reading of you can start to, you know, tell things about where you will go and in what direction there's a potential to bloom. But things, you know, need to happen in a, in a very organic way. I feel, you know, it's a tragedy that when, when things are going right, we are all happy and it's all good. But when things start to go wrong, the mind you know, starts to blame others. The mind starts to, you know, release that responsibility. And I can tell you the biggest liberation, the biggest powerful, liberating moment of a human life is when we start taking responsibility of our own life. If your partner was abusive, toxic, if your partner was not loving you, it's very easy to constantly blame that partner, all right? No one will say anything. You will have girlfriends and boyfriends and all the people who will constantly say yes to you and nod to your opinions. And if you keep creating these narratives, they go beyond relationships. You'll start putting this narrative on everything that you're going through in life. You know, the wrong job, the bad coffee, the bad partner, everything that's not going as per your expectations, you will start blaming it on someone else. 
and i mean i've mentioned it many times in my podcast nowadays people you know they go beyond blaming the humans they blame planets they blame the idea of god that they have been you know cultivating in their life and again it's very easy to keep blaming something that will not answer you back you are not doing damage to anyone except your own awareness because when you keep blaming you kind of insult your consciousness you start to you know degrade your own strength and when you start taking responsibility of your life of your actions of all the consequences that's happening a powerful shift starts to happen in your consciousness i truly feel and i've experienced it and i've experienced it in many people's lives that the moment you become responsible all the known and unknown forces start to join you they start to help you because you know i know some of the most spiritual and religious people who were like very loyal to their path and when things were not going right they become angry toward the same philosophy toward the same path and this is how we love also right when things are going as per our, our expectations we are very romantic and there's you know all passion and all the great stuff suddenly when things are going against our expectations we start to have so much hate for the same person who was once receiving that so called love from us it's not the right way to bloom that's not how blooming happens this is how conditioning happens okay and i used to i've always shared about uh, responsibility and i've clearly seen that any time i mention responsibility people used to become little stiff and i was like this is a very important word why people react negatively to responsibility and i come to know that any time i mention responsibility people feel this is going to become a blockage in their freedom this is going to become an obstacle in their growth and some people also see it as some sort of duty imposed on them or sometimes they feel it's it's some sort of a guilt thing that they have to go through and when i speak to these people it it makes sense because they come from a certain culture they come from a certain background a certain conditioning where responsibility was always you know it came with anger pain it came with certain authority and that you know that always turned them off i know people whose you know parents were very authoritative and they would also always remind them to be responsible to take care of their life and now when i mention the word it brings them fear it brings them pain and i tell them this is a good opportunity for you to shift your perspective about responsibility and those who make the effort they find it they find the truth they find that higher path so if you are one of those you know people for whom responsibility brings a certain pain a certain heaviness take a pause and revisit your definition of responsibility because responsibility doesn't mean that there's some you know duty or something imposed on you but responsibility simply means that you are honoring your blooming you are honoring your existence that's what responsibility really is in the eastern traditions because when you start taking responsibility you will start to make the best use of astrology guidance spiritual guidance meditation guidance and all the amazing work that you know you are trying to do for your growth and healing because when people are not trained or they are not ready to take their own responsibility then any form of guidance any form of help given to them turns out to be kind of useless only because their mind is so conditioned to never ever take the responsibility okay so you know when buddha was dying all his students gathered around him and they were sad they already knew that this is like this is it their journey with the, the master is over and buddha saw that fear he was watching this fear for so long and he told them that if you become spiritually dependent on me you will never bloom you have to take responsibility for your own growth and they said how will that growth happen and he responded with this mantra apo deepa bhava which means be your own light and i use this mantra in my poetry at times and i say be your own muse if you are not your own muse if you are not tapping into your own light 
then how will you grow how will you evolve and in my experience of working with people for 10 plus years the greatest success stories have only been those who were ready to take responsibility of their journey who were not dumping the problems on me or on moon or on planets i mean if i choose to work with you for that long term this becomes one of the key requirements that you got to cultivate the courage and i'll help you to do that but you got to have this intention that i'm going to take complete responsibility of everything that's happening within me and around me this is the only way my friend you can release all the toxic relationships all the pain all the melodrama and all the crazy stuff that continues to happen with you why do you think you keep attracting a similar pattern because somewhere we are not ready to take responsibility our ego is too big we become too complicated in our mind and we never ever want to take that you know high responsibility but good thing about human being is that we can always evolve in fact this is the gift of being a human we continue to evolve we continue to change ourselves this is why in kundalini the symbol of transformation is snake snakes are have always been seen in the eastern traditions as a symbol of transformation and i don't have to tell you that when i started to you know bring up snakes in my talks in us it would always get very interesting reactions and i realized snake is not looked upon as some sacred you know animal here but in tantra in kundalini in eastern traditions snake is looked upon as something uh, which reminds us of evolving of moving on to the next transitions and always you know being like in the strength but anyway that's a topic for a different podcast right to talk about all the animals and how they continue to remind us of all the strength and hopefully i'll talk about them someday so the two things i want to tell you number 1 it sounds great right to be responsible for your blooming and people always ask me the teachings sound great how do we implement the teachings in our daily life and i would say i think it's going to be great experiment if you start putting this into your daily intention in the meditation practice your daily intention could be about leading life with responsibility or taking responsibility of your actions intentions okay another interesting uh, intention could be to remind yourself that you are a conscious choice maker so this is the law of karma you know the karma uh, says you are a conscious choice maker and i do have an episode on karma so listen to that as well i think that could be a great blend with this topic because the law of karma reminds us that we are a conscious choice maker uh, there's always a choice of what to do what to avoid so make the choices that are conscious that are aware and that empower you spiritually emotionally and mentally if something is not evolving you something is not bringing you that empowerment you got to step away you got to take a different route all right and you know when we tap into the consciousness it will always remind us to be responsible to lead with responsibility but any time we go off track and we go into the path of unawareness being unconscious that's when we start dumping the responsibilities on all those things okay so i don't want to drag this episode by keep reminding you of this one simple teaching so i'll let you dive into this i'll let you meditate on this and do let me know on instagram at cb meditates what do you think of this episode and do not forget to write a review on itunes this is it for today thank you so much i hope this podcast may travel through the untapped universe of your darkness light courage passion and so much more please do subscribe and be ready to break your norms i am so excited and very honored to be part of your sacred journey through this podcast